Climate is considered the most important broad-scale influence on an ecosystem, and monitoring climate is critical to understanding the changing conditions and trends in an ecosystem. In southwest Alaska, national park managers are working to gain a better understanding of the ecosystems they manage by deploying a network of automated weather stations throughout the parks. Bruce Giffen is a Park Service geologist who works on this effort. RAW stands for Remote Automated Weather Station. And we're putting out these in the, uh, in the national parks in southwest Alaska, Kenai Fjords, Katmai, Lake Clark. The goal is to get these into remote, isolated areas where there's no weather information currently. And so they, um, they collect weather observations hourly and fire off to a, fire that suite of information off to a satellite and incorporate it into the uh, World Wide Web. So you can go uh, look at the current weather observations on the web. We're recording um, temperature, relative humidity, and uh, those are hourly averages and hourly minimums and maximums. We're recording wind speed and wind direction, and uh, that's an hourly average, and we also get a, um, a wind gust every hour. We're also recording solar radiation. We're recording precipitation and snow depth. One of the more unique and challenging locations selected for a remote station was the middle of the Harding Ice Field, a vast area of snow and glacial ice that makes up a large part of Kenai Fjords National Park. In our network, this is currently the highest one. This is about 4,200 feet. And um, it's sitting in the middle of the Harding Ice Field. And we wanted a site high because there are no sites that are high around here. Um, and it's actually sitting on a nunatak, so this is a rock island surrounded by ice right here. You wouldn't be able to tell that right now, but we are um, this rock right below us here. And uh, the, the reason you set the weather station on the rock is so it doesn't get buried in the winter time. If we were to set it out in the flats there, we would, um, the station would be buried in one, one season. This is a very challenging site, uh, lots of ice, icing on the antennas which uh, prevents hourly transmissions. We've got icing occurring on the station itself and it's just a tremendous amount of weight and, and on, on the tower itself. So um, lots of force on this tower when you got lots of ice and heavy winds coming through here. We've recorded um, many instances of almost annually wind speed gusts in excess of 100 miles an hour. And, and I think this one has, this one's re recorded 117 miles an hour um, about a year and a half ago. So it, it's just, it's a challenge to keep this guy going. And, and during, the, during the winter time, we get about, oh, I'd say we get 60 to 70% transmission success. Um, there's a data logger inside here. We're not losing any data, but um, we may not get 100% transmission throughout the year. While the station's primary function is to gather long-term data on climate trends, they're also proving a valuable tool to local pilots who use them to check weather conditions in near real time. The park aviators are using them almost daily. The pilots will log on to the internet and look at the weather at these particular sites to, you know, if, if their mission is taking them near those areas. By the time this one fires off, it will be on the internet within 10 or 15 minutes. So it's, it's near real time weather data, weather information. They really do provide for that element of safety so the pilots know what the weather's like in the area that they're wanting to go. So, and they, they didn't have that before. So that is a nice feature of these. They're solar powered and there's batteries um, in the big white cabinet here. And so we have two 12 volt batteries in there. And there's a data logger that, um, that records the data that's being collected hourly. We come here once every year and swap out sensors, do station maintenance, routine annual maintenance, and uh, download all the data. So we get a complete set of data um, to go into the archive. So there's 
vast areas of the state that were that are unmonitored as far as weather and climate go. So this is our hope in um, setting these weather stations out, and so we're going to be filling in the gaps of the regional climate in Alaska. And the goal is to keep these out forever. Really, the the value of this data set. Um, increases every year that this station is out here and and you really need a a lifetime of 30 years to get a really good data set built up and um, once you're at that point you just got to keep keep these things ticking